Hi. So uh, Arlo and I are back at it. Um, we're out of bread, like completely out of bread. Um, and so we're going to do some baking today. We've got a few things going. Um, if you haven't seen our pita video yet, um, that's another thing that you can make in a relatively short period of time. And um, I think you'll see how relatively easy that is to do. Okay, so today we are going to make, uh, like I said, we're going to make bread and we are going to follow um, this recipe which is on the King Arthur website for something we call Just Bread. And Just Bread is um, part of this project that we're involved with which is uh, called the Approachable Loaf uh, Project. You can look for the hashtag and it's something that began at the Bread Lab in Washington State. And basically what we're trying to do is encourage people to eat um, bread with few ingredients. Uh, many bakeries across the country are part of the project. And it's kind of like a soft sandwich loaf, but it's made with a fair amount of whole wheat flour. Um, so that's the recipe that we're following. This is a two day recipe and if you're looking for something that's a little bit quicker, just look on the website and you'll find some recipes for breads that can be made in less time. Um, and as we mix, we'll talk about some of the reasons why this is a good, uh, a good recipe and one of the reasons that we like it. Um, now, because bread takes time, what we've done is we've kind of tried to compress things. So this is a dough that I mixed earlier today, um, divided, shaped, proofed, and it's ready to go in the oven. So we're going out of order a little bit, so be patient with us. Um, and I think what I'll do is, I'm actually gonna stencil one of these loaves. Um, and maybe you've seen stenciled loaves before, maybe you haven't. Um, but I have a few different options for stencils that I like. I have a millstone that I really like, and I also have um, some wheat sheaves. You can even make them by, um, out of paper. And if you actually on the King Arthur website, there's an article about how to make stencils, and it shows some of my uh, handiwork. But it's a nice way to add some decorative value and to do so quite easily. Okay, this is actually, this is your favorite, right? You like this one. Okay, yeah. so let's do that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on the loaf and then I've got a little bit of flour and I'm just going to dust it just a little bit. And then when you remove it, if you're really careful, you won't smudge it. So let's see. Yeah, so that's kind of an example of how that can work. Okay, so these are clearly ready to go in the oven. They might have even gone in, you know, maybe 15 or 20 minutes ago. But uh, we're just juggling things and making it happen here. Okay, so Arlo, you want to open the door? Thank you. Actually, you know what? I don't want to bake these on the pan. I want to So Arlo's gonna set our timer. Did you add next? Uh, let's start with, yeah, let's do 35. I think 35 is gonna be good and we'll just check in on it from time to time. Um, you know, an oven is not an exact tool. Different places, uh, you know, if you bake from house to house or you know, if you have a loaf that works at a certain time and temperature in your house, if you go to a friend's house, you may find that um, the time and temperature changes. So a good thing to have in the oven is like a baking thermometer, uh, one of those nice you know, oven thermometers that can hang out on a rack. Um, and alternatively, um, you have to use your eyeballs, your nose, uh, and, and just keep an eye on it. So um, that's gonna bake for, we're gonna check it around 30, 35 minutes. I'll be looking in on it just to see what's going on. Um, Let's see, what else? I should say thank you to Anthem, who's behind the camera again today uh, and helping us out. She did such a good job with our PETA video that we recruited her for a second, a second time. So thank you, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, the first thing that we're gonna do, well, the second thing I guess that we're gonna do is we're gonna divide this dough, which I mixed earlier and which has been proofing. Um, house is cold today it's still we're in the like second third day of spring it was 62 in the house this morning so it's chilly things are moving at a slightly slower rate than they will in June or July um, and so uh, we're just waiting things take a little bit longer the final proof takes a little bit longer 
Um, the first rise, you know, a little bit longer. Um, but clearly this is ready to go. So, uh, come in here, Anthony. Um, you can see that this is ready to go. It's, you can even see that there are some gas bubbles here. Um, this recipe calls for uh, white whole wheat, which I like and I use a lot of, but uh, I ran out. I ran out uh, and so I switched and I used, um, I'm using hard red winter wheat, this red wheat, it's the standard sort of red and brown bag, uh, and that will work perfectly well. It will actually work. You can make a direct swap between white whole wheat and this traditional sort of red whole wheat. There are no problems there. It's one of the benefits. Um, so, the recipe for just bread on the website calls for, um, it's a quantity of ingredients. Thanks, buddy. Um, it's ingredient quantities that will make, um, the recipe is for one loaf. But, I don't know, have I ever made one loaf? No. No, yeah, no. It's always like two or three. Always two or three, yeah, because, um, I don't know, it, we can eat a loaf of bread in a day, no problem, <laughs> right? Um, and if I have one, um, I can divide it in half and then, you know, so I think what we'll do today is we'll make some rolls uh, or we'll do something like that. So, um, I'm going to divide this in half and just half in half roughly I think that we need about yeah about that for a loaf and then for rolls what I'm gonna do is I've got 900 grams here roughly maybe a little bit more okay yeah a little bit more um, 980 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide these to let's say like be a decent roll let's do 80 gram rolls so I'm going to divide this into 80 gram pieces, and Arlo, I'm going to have you, um, can you round them into buns for me? And I'm going to show you, let me show you or remind you. Do you remember how you did it with the pita, how we made those rounds? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. I'm using this scale, but you know, you don't have to use the scale. You could just, um, you can certainly eyeball it. We don't have to sell these uh, to anybody. We're just going to eat them. So the reason to be accurate though, is that if you have a roll that weighs a hundred grams and you have another roll, man, that's good. I'm, that's really good actually. Thank you. Um, if you have a roll that weighs hundred grams and you have another roll that weighs 70 grams, the hundred gram roll is not going to be done in the same amount of baking time as the 70 gram roll. So that's the reason to be accurate. And the other thing that I would say about being accurate, at least for me, is that um, things tend to look better when they are the same size and shape. And so um, if I can focus on that, um, what comes out of the oven is more beautiful and I just feel like it, uh, I don't know, I feel like it shows that I care. So um, I like things to be even. Um, I don't want to be super uptight about it, but a little bit uptight about it is okay. All right, so. Um, yeah, you're running out of room. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, actually, you know what, let's do our little, let's go ahead and put them in the pan. I've got a pan buttered and um, what we're gonna do is, let's just see. These look good, they're nice, and, um, they're nice and round, and that looks really good. So I'm gonna put them in there like that, and I'm gonna tighten them too, and that. So, Anthem, can you see that, or should I bring that closer, can you see? Okay, cool. Two, let's see how we're doing here. These look good, Arlo. So pulling these over, we might need another pan, huh? Okay, let's see, I'll grab another little pan here, we'll put one in the middle. Okay, set that aside for right now, Arlo, you keep rounding. Okay, 
Yeah, look at you. <laughs> That's good. It's actually really good. Okay. Were you rounding that? Mm -hmm. Okay. How did it work? Were you, were you making a little cage with your fingers and then moving it like that? I guess you so. Kind of go like that. You can make a little cage. Go like that. There we go. I'm doing it like the cheater bakery way, the quick way. Okay. There we go. Okay. What about this cheese? We'll eat that. You could also add it to your loaf, but I think that that's going to be good. Okay. Set those aside. Now, next thing we're going to do is shape the loaf. And um, what I want to do is show you first. We could actually gather this. I didn't pre-shape that. You can pre-shape it, which is a nice, um, it's a nice step. And it will help you to have more consistent final shapes. It's just a little bit of a pre-shape. Um, so maybe if I set that aside for a second. And I'm going to use this towel and just show you some shaping techniques here. Shaping bread is kind of like folding paper in a way. The mediums are completely different, but shaping bread involves a series, a series of steps. And so if we pretend that this is my like lump of dough, the way that I'm going to shape this, this uh, pan loaf is as follows. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. Shaping is like um, a destination. You know, we want a certain shape as our destination. And the way that we get there, you can take a, a variety of different routes as long as you get there. And so some people you'll see shape and they sort of take the scenic route and other people can shape very quickly and take a more direct route. What matters is that you have a nice form which goes in the oven. So don't get too uptight about that part, right? Okay. So, um, to shape the basic pan loaf, the way that I tend to do it these days is as follows. I'm going to have my lump of dough in just a second. I'll do it with the dough, but for right now, um, I'll just use this napkin. So I kind of pat it so that it has an even height on the work surface. And then I'll tuck the sides in like this. And then starting from the top, I just come down. And as it folds down, I press and I press until I basically have a tubular shape like that. And we'll have a seam on the bottom and we have a relatively homogeneous form from end to end. And that will, you know, you don't worry about the little lumps or little lines, don't worry about that too much because as the dough piece inflates during the final rise, some of those differences or some of that weirdness will sort of um, go away. So there's that. In a perfect world, this pre-shape would have maybe 10 or 15 minutes, depending on the type of dough, maybe a little bit longer. But, um, but I think that it's a soft enough dough that it should be okay to go ahead and shape now. Okay. Just a little bit of flour on the work surface. You can probably barely see that. That's about how much you want. You don't want so much, like, you don't want to shape bread on that. That's too much. You want to shape bread on just a wisp of flour. Just a wisp. And before I shape, I wouldn't dump a bunch of flour inside because this is going to become the inside of the loaf, right? And I don't want to fold a bunch of um, raw flour in there. It's not, it's going to create a floury, floury sort of line on the inside of the loaf. We don't want that. Okay. So. All right, uh, so remember that part where I folded the sides in? Yep. There we go, like that. And do you want to do the next part? Sure. Give it a shot. So what you're going to do, you want me to do the first one? I'll do the first one and then you take over. I'm going to take this and I'm going to press it to seal it. And I'm pressing with my hands sort of like paddles, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not using my fingers like pointers. It's not like I'm playing the piano. I always say like, no magic fingers, you know? None of this kind of stuff. 
Use your hands as paddles and you'll be good. Mm -hmm. So come down like that. So just grab it here and then push with the paddle. Oh, you nailed it. That was really good. And then just see that you can press it. You press with enough pressure that it seals a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like that. If you need to use the, the, um, the sort palm. of base of your palm, yeah, it's called the palm. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can use that and sort of nail it like that. Okay, do that again. Yep, yep, and then not all the way yet. Let's go like, let's just go halfway. Mm-hmm, okay. Yep, fingers as paddles, pressing to seal. Yep, yep, that's good. And then I just look to see, is it still kind of a square form? If it needs some help, come in and just sort of say, okay, you stay in there. Now for the last one, same thing, and then just seal it with your palm at the front. Like that? Yeah, that's good. That's good. And then just press. And press where it's going to come unsealed. So right there. See oh. that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Can I try to flip it over like this? Yeah, and then roll it so that you see. Does it feel pretty even end to end? Yeah. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, I say that looks pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. Looks great, right? Okay. All right. This is already buttered. Did I butter that? Yeah, I buttered it. Okay. So, you want to put that in there? Go ahead and put that in there. So should I just pick it up first? Yeah, just pick it up and make sure that as you go in, what you want is you want this seam to be on the bottom. Because okay. if the seam is on the top, what happens is that it kind of comes unraveled, right? Mm -hmm. But if you put the seam on the bottom, it'll, it'll hold there. Just, just plop it in. Yeah, just plop it in. Perfect. And if it doesn't go in, like, perfectly, what you can do is just, at this early stage, you can just use your finger and just sort of knock it down in there a little bit, and that'll be perfectly good. Okay, so, really important um, during the rise is to make sure that you cover it well, especially this time of year when it's, uh, when it's dry, the ambient humidity is pretty low, make sure you put it in a dry place. I mean, uh, make sure that you protect it from drying out. Um, couple notes about that. Um, I think PJ just wrote a blog for King Arthur and it's like, what are some good tips or hacks for places where I can proof bread in my house? And she had some really good suggestions. Um, this morning, I kept having Arlo um, take our shaped stuff in and, and leave it by the wood stove. Um, like not too close, but just sort of watching it, finding that like Goldilocks zone, that warmish place to encourage things. Um, you know, right now in cool March, things are going to take a long time. Once we hit July or something, I mean, proof times go very quickly. So if you're down in Florida today or if you're up uh, further north than we are, which is hard to do in the United States, um, yeah, just be mindful of that and how you proof. Okay, so this one's ready to go. Let's set that aside. We need to cover those. Um, Have a trash bag. Any old bag will do. Um, I'll check back on these in a little bit because if they really, um, because if they really begin to proof, there's a chance that they can stick to the plastic bag. So you just got to kind of keep an eye on them. Or if you grab a little bit of air like that, uh, and you have a bag that hasn't been used ten times, which some of ours have, um, that's a good trick. That'll keep that plastic off the surface of the dough. Okay. Shape. All right, so let's mix. So I know we're going out of order and it's a little bit confusing, but um, now what I want to show you is the mix. And um, you ready to you ready to help me? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Um, so I've got some flour. I have. Um, can you grab me a mini spatula? See if you can find a mini spatula. Uh, okay. So, um, the recipe normally calls for, this is the just bread recipe, um, normally calls for white whole wheat uh, and also some bread flour. Um, I had a little bit of white whole wheat. I don't have any bread flour. I have all purpose and I'm gonna use that um, and then, so I had some white whole wheat and I had uh, some red wheat also. So this is kind of like 
I'm, I'm following the recipe in terms of if it calls for a whole wheat, whether it's white or red, I'm using that quantity. Um, the white, I had to sub, like I said, the all-purpose for, instead of the bread flour, all-purpose has a little bit less protein, so the bread might not rise quite as high, but, um, but it's going to be okay. It's going to make great bread. Um, and so, let's see, what else do we need? Um, this bread recipe also calls for um, a pre-ferment. And a pre-ferment is basically um, a portion of the dough which has been mixed and then set to ferment overnight. Um, and the reason to do that is that as dough ferments, it develops flavor. And similar to the way that some of us like wine better than grape juice or um, beer better than, uh, you know, roasted barley water, um, fermentation adds a lot of flavor. Um, a pre-ferment is like a bouillon cube of fermentation in a way. Uh, and for this pre-ferment, what I've used is some sourdough. So I take a little bit of sourdough starter, I mix it with flour and water, and then it rises overnight. And now I'm going to add that into my final mix. Um, you can do it with yeast too. So if you don't have a sourdough starter, you can use a pinch of yeast. All of those instructions are included in the Just Bread recipe on the website. Um, and like I said, if someone wants to make like a quicker, uh, a quicker bread where they don't have to wait overnight for a pre-ferment, those recipes are on the website too. Okay. So come over here. So this is the pre-ferment. Did you smell it? Yeah. It smells, it smells sour, right? It smells acidic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can smell it. I mean, so this is a sourdough. So that means that um, it has a culture, and in the culture is a colony of bacteria and yeasts, both of which produce flavor as byproducts of their um, processes. So that's going to add flavor. It's going to give not a super sour kick to it, but a little bit. And the sour um, will also help the uh, it will also help the bread's keeping qualities. Um, although we don't really need to worry about that too much because at the current sort of number of people who are around the house all day, um, we're going to go through this pretty quickly. So again, like I said, I'm making a double batch and I found out this morning that in order to get a good dough temperature, I needed to use water, which was 110 degrees. So that's what I have today. And that gave me a dough temperature of about 76 to 78. Did I get enough? I didn't quite get enough. Okay, hold on. Let me grab a little more water. Okay. 680, 520. Doubling the recipe. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just distribute this sour into the water. You want to do that? Sure. Go for it. You're just squeezing it and uh, getting it in there with your hands. Yeah, perfect. We're just trying to break it up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you kind of want to distribute that into the yeah. water. Turn the oven down just a little bit. My oven runs um, low by about 50 degrees, and so sometimes, but not always, it's uh, it's not ideal. And so there's a little bit of like baking in terms of you're following the exact instructions that you've written or tested, and then there's a little bit of cooking too, like you're looking at it and kind of seeing is it done or how's it looking. So it looks good. It's taking color, maybe taking color a little quickly. So I turn the Turn the heat down, and I think we're going to be fine. Okay, how's that look? Yeah. You want a towel? You got it? Here you go. All right. So, there's the sourdough distributed into the water. Um, I've got honey and vegetable oil. That's going in. There we go. Um, I can hear some sound from the studio. Um... My wife, Julie, uh, is 
home and working. She teaches voice and uh, is doing Zoom lessons because everybody's, you know, we still need music and uh, it's actually been really good. But you'll hear some music from time to time. Okay, um, salt and yeast are going in. You know, a lot of people are worried about, um, oh, don't let the salt touch the yeast. Don't let the yeast touch the salt. These two are fine together. No problem there. They're going to spend several hours together in the dough environment. Uh, there's no problem there. They'll be just fine. Okay, I'll get that in there. Feels good, right? It's nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right in, let it distribute. And all the flour goes in. Is there a wooden cooking spoon over there? Look in the dishwasher. Look in the dishwasher. Yeah, look in the dishwasher. Be okay. Oh, you know what, buddy? That's all right. I'll just do it. Hand is fine. No, it's okay. It's okay. I got it. Um, I think the directions on the website for this bread have you doing it in the mixer, um, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I tend to use my hands unless it's really necessary. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's one of the things that I enjoy about bread is actually, um, is actually touching it. Okay. Do you want to work at this for a second? Sure. Okay. I'm going to get my hands cleaned off just a little bit. And uh, maybe I'll show you what I want you to do. I'm going to show you with the dough scraper, okay? So, okay. I'm just going to work on this in the, in the bowl. The dough, because it's whole wheat, um, the dough is a little bit soft. And I think sometimes people say... Um, I don't like whole bread, it's whole wheat bread, it's like a brick, or my whole wheat bread comes out too dense. Um, often that's because um, the recipe that you're following doesn't call for enough water. Whole wheat flour absorbs more water than all purpose. It has bran in it, right? The whole wheat is the whole berry. And the bran portion of the grain is, um, takes in more water. So, um, so you want to have a dough which is kind of soft. And this isn't, I would say, in terms of doughs that uh, I like to work with, this isn't super soft, but it's uh, but it's slightly tacky. And so uh, if I had it out on the counter and I were kneading, I might be inclined to add some flour just to make it easier to knead. But we don't really want to do that because adding flour is changing the recipe. It's going to tighten the loaf and make it a little bit denser. So do you see how I'm pulling that up and pressing it down? Yep. You see how I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. I'm almost like smearing it. Turn the bowl, pull it, press it like this. And this is pretty much the exact same process that I'll use when I um, when I fold the dough during uh, during the rise. Okay, here we go. You go while I wash my hands. Looks really good. Okay, so um, do it for just another minute, and then what we're going to do is, um, and you could do this by hand too. If you were going to do it by hand, what I would recommend is um, get your hand wet, and this goes for folding too. If you have a little bit of moisture on your hand, your hand's not going to stick, and so you can even get to where you can kind of like, I feel like I'm a bread machine, you know, just kind of turning. Okay, so 
So that's good. I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. And I think what we'll do is mix our pre-ferment. So, um, I tend to use a scale. I use the scale a lot. Um, why, do I, why would I use the scale instead of a cup measure? Because you can do grams. Yeah, because you can do grams. So the reason that I like to use the scale and use grams, good job, is that um, it's more, uh, I can be more accurate. So if I ask you to scoop a cup of flour and I ask Anthem to scoop a cup of flour and I ask Mom to scoop a cup, cup, a cup of flour and I ask Clementine to scoop a cup of flour and I scoop one too, how many different results would we get? How many different weights of flour do you think that we would get? Five. Five different weights, exactly. He's not, uh, that was good, that was good. Um, yeah, we'd have five different weights because everybody fills their cup differently. Maybe you like to make sure everybody's getting a full cup so you pack it in there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Anthem, uh, you know, is a little bit gentler with it because she knows how to make cakes and cupcakes. Um, and so everybody's gonna have a different result. But if I say, can you put uh, 120 grams of flour into a bowl, everybody's gonna put 120 grams of flour in there, right? So in that sense, the scale becomes a communication device in a way, a way for us to talk about a recipe in a way that's consistent. So uh, that's a good thing to do. Uh, weights are a good thing to do, um, but not entirely necessary. If you are gonna scoop a cup of flour, a good way to do it um, is the, you know, is to take your, um, let's see. What I like to do is, is that dry? Yes, yeah, dry. Is go in like this. Is to sprinkle it in. Come on, almost there. And then is to uh, so sprinkle it in and then um, and then level it off like that. Okay. So for to build this pre-ferment, what I need is a teaspoon of sourdough starter, and this is my active uh, starter that's hanging out on the counter. And I'm going to take a teaspoon, roughly, relatively flat. Uh, and I will reach out some water, here. like lukewarm. Okay, teaspoon of starter. That's all it's going to take. And then, how much flour do I need? 57 grams. Yeah, that looks good, thank you. 57 grams of starter. Buddy. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to do that? Sure. Go for it. Uh, so we just mix it in. Just keep working. Yeah, that's exactly right. Smear it as you can to try and get it in there, and then if you need to, we'll just use the dough scraper to down the sides a little bit. And as you work that, it'll come off your hands. Just keep working at it. and then we're gonna take it out. I think we'll 
How's that going? Good. That looks good. Yeah, I think you're good. You can go clean up if you want. That's all it takes. And that's the uh, that's following the recipe instructions. So that's just going to make one loaf. Um, obviously, if you double it, uh, it's going to be a little bit larger. Okay. So I think we're going to fold this, and then uh, I think we'll fold this. So. If you're following the instructions, you know that I'm jumping this fold. I'm, I'm doing it early just because I want to make sure that um, you see how to do it. Do you want to do this fold and just do it the way that I showed you, like working around the bowl with the scraper? Sure. Okay, go for it. So just go around like once. Okay. And that should probably do it. Does it feel like it's firming up? Do you feel how it's firming up? Yeah. yeah. So you know that big ball of dough that we divided, right? Mm -hmm. That's This is the same amount. So this is going to grow to be that amount. Crazy, huh? Yeah, amazing, right? Amazing. Okay. We get all the way around? Yeah. Unless you want to go around again. Go around one more time. It feels like it will take it. And then what I'll do is I'll turn it over. And if you want to, you can put a little bit of oil in the bowl to help you get it out later. Come on. There we go. Okay. So, there's that. I'll take that. I think we're pretty close on these lows. What do you think? Did you look? How do you know when it's done? Well, it's brown, brown around the top. Brown on the top. That's good. Looks good. I think it's looking pretty good. Um, you're right. So how do you know when bread's done, right? We want it to be brown on the top. Um, especially whole wheat bread will be a nice dark color. Um, I usually say to people, do you like roasted vegetables or do you like boiled vegetables? I like things that are roasted better, so I like to bake my breads uh, to full color. Um, a nice soft bread like this with some uh, a little bit of oil in it is not going to get super, super crusty and hard. So I think that it's looking pretty good. I think these could probably go a couple more minutes, but I think that in the interest of time, let's see how they look. Actually, let's check this one first. What I want to do is check and see, and yeah, it looks good. Sides and bottom are nice and brown. It's not super firm yet. I think it could take a couple more minutes, but I think that that's going to be a delicious loaf. Should we go ahead and get the other one out? Yeah. Let's do it. Really pretty. They're nice and high. So we'll start just a little bit. So when they're done, uh, when the loaves are done and they come out of the oven, it's important to go ahead and get them out of the pans because um, if you don't take them out of the pans, what happens is that um, the loaf is still giving off moisture, right? Mm -hmm. And so if it's in the pan, it's like it, um, if it's in the pan, it's, it will steam and the sidewalls will get really soft. And we don't want that. I want to have a nice crust all the way around, so I want to take it out of there. Um, what else to say about that? I think it's pretty good. Well, let them cool. Let them cool like most of the way. If you slice them too quickly, um, they're still cooking and cooling. It's like a chicken when you take it out of the oven, you want it to have time to cool off and, and soften some. Um, I don't know, you have any thoughts about that? No. Looks good? Looks good. Yeah. Smells good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, thank you for joining us again. Um, we've enjoyed this time, and I've been getting some complaints about not having bread in the house, so we should have some bread in the house now. Um, and I guess I just wanted to say that um, this for us is a difficult time, and it's also a chance to do something special, which is to be together and to feed ourselves uh, while we think of everyone who is suffering in so many ways. Um, so I want to say thank you for joining us, and I hope that this brings a little bit of 
brightness and good smells to your day. Cheers.